What effect does the favor of God have on others around you when you have the favor of God? Peering from a window and a tiny piece of rock that changes everything. It's time for Bible Discovery TV Quick Study. Stay there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hemby. And I'm Janice. Hey, welcome to Quick Study Bible Discovery TV. It's great to have you with us. Whether you're listening on radio or watching on the internet or television, we're going through the Bible in one year. Now, the Bible's an amazing book, and today we read this in Second or First Chronicles, rather, chapter 13 to 16. We're going to study in chapter 14, verses 1 to 12, about the favor of God. What effect does the favor of God have on those around us? us. Now it's going to be an interesting study, so I want you to stay there. It's going to be a good one. Corey is also here with Bible History and Archaeology. Corey? Today we are going to be talking about the Amarna letters, but as they uh, really connect with the ancient city of Jerusalem, which was of course David's capital city when he was king over all of Israel. Okay, look forward to that, Corey. Janice is here with Do You Know? Do you know who watched David through a window? despising him as he danced and played music in returning the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. All of this and more coming up. Here is Corey with Bible History. Does the Bible record accurate history? That's what you and I really focus on in our studies on Quick Study during my segment. Right now, you and I are going to be talking, taking a look at the city of Jerusalem before the time period of David. Recently, a tiny piece of an ancient tablet was discovered in an excavation in Jerusalem. It preserves Akkadian writing that has been dated to around 1400 BC, making it by far the earliest writing to have been found in Jerusalem. Due to the small size of the broken clay document, it's impossible to piece together what it said. However, it is clear that it was of top scribal quality, and it has been noted how intriguingly similar it is to the famed Amarna letters. The Amarna letters refer to clay tablets that were a part of Pharaoh Akhenaten's records, dated to around 1400 BC. They were written by kings of surrounding cities and nations. A prominent figure in the Amarna letters is Abdi Haba, king of pagan Jerusalem, who is credited with writing six or seven of the discovered letters, and is mentioned by name in at least one other. The letters from this king of Jerusalem have been specially noted by researchers to be of a particularly high scribal quality, and they also portray a picture of a thriving, industrious, well-established Jerusalem smack dab in the middle of the time period of the Judges. Biblically, this works. We're told that the people couldn't oust the Jebusites from Jerusalem. And King David gained special renown in the Bible for his conquering of this city, which he then chooses as his capital. The problem has arisen, however, that there has been almost nothing found archaeologically of this Amarna period city. Without the Amarna letters from Egypt, the Bible would stand alone in its description of Jerusalem before David. That is, until now. If this small clay fragment is what it seems to be, then it too proclaims, albeit quietly, 
that Jerusalem was indeed once a capable administrative center with a happening scribe. You know, I think the only thing that is equal in number to the amount of controversies and arguments and opinions over finds in Jerusalem is archaeological finds in Jerusalem itself. But at least this tiny fragment, this um, piece of an Amarna letter, it means the end to at least one of those arguments, and it's in the Bible's favor. You know, Corey, I was talking to an archaeologist when I was over earlier in Israel, and he said to me, you know, everywhere you dig in Jerusalem or Israel, you're going to find something. And mm -hmm. it's really true. It's absolutely true. The amount of finds that um, happen in Israel really on a daily and a monthly basis just through construction or, uh, you know, a heavy rainfall or, or anything of that sort is astounding. It happens all the time. One just happened in the Jezreel Valley. They found an anthropod coffin. And we mm. do want to encourage you, if you've never visited Israel, you should. I've been there a number of times. We encourage you to do that. I want to remind you that we have a, a, a unique video here uh, that uh, it, we put together on Revelation chapter 1. It's part of a series that we're doing all through the book of Revelation. It's called Revelation Looking into the Face of God. We've never done this before where we go literally verse by verse through Revelation, but it's a teaching video we've prepared for you. I'm actually very excited about it, and I have learned a lot studying the book of Revelation verse by verse. So we want you to have a copy of the first edition, Revelation Staring into the Face of God, for a gift of $25 or more. Now, the gift of $25 or more covers the cost of mailing the DVD and all of that, but it also helps us. And so... When you do that, we can keep the lights on. We can keep broadcasting quick study television. I want to give you the phone number first, and then I'll bring the address back, because the phone number is for faster service, 724-733-8336 in the United States of America, 519-940-8338 in Canada. Now, those watching overseas in the great nation of Australia and the amazing uh, a nation, of course, of New Zealand, which I love, and of course in Europe and all the other places, you can go to the website and actually, when you give there, download it directly or watch it directly there. For those of you who want to write, you can send to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. And in Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Thank you in advance for your gift. Let's study on. You know, well-trained soldiers know that favor from the chief commander does not mean that the rule of law changes for them. Superheroes of the Bible understand that the favor of God does not mean we gain permission to change the commands of Christ, to suit our own personal desires, or even adjust our life to the surrounding culture. Now, David, King David, had seven wives, which is six too many. You see, from the beginning, God made Adam and Eve, one husband, one wife, and the two, not eight, shall become one flesh. Now remember that just because the good kings of Israel did well does not mean that they always did right. The king's sons and daughters would become some of his greatest failures because his family life was wrong before God. Let's study on. First Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and cedar trees with masons and carpenters to build him a house. So David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, for his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. Then David took more wives in Jerusalem, and David begot more sons and daughters. And these are the names of his children, whom he had in Jerusalem, Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpalet, Noga, Nepheg, Jephiah, Elishama, Beliada, and Elephalet. 
Now when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went out against them. Then the Philistines went and made a raid on the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? The Lord said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. So they went up to Beel Perizim, and David defeated them there. Then David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a breakthrough of water. Therefore they called the name of that place Baal Perizim. And when they left their gods there, David gave a commandment, and they were burned with fire. First Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Rod Hembry here. This is Bible Discovery TV Quick Study Television. Thank you for joining us. Now, what does the culture of the gospel of Jesus Christ look like? And I'm not talking about the quartets and the culture of gospel music that we see in the music industry. I'm talking about what does the culture of the gospel, the good news, meaning the favor of God, look like? Now that's interesting to me, and, and there's a couple of points we're going to learn today. And before we get started, I would remind you that the Power Guide is available. It is a print companion to this program, and I want to encourage you to write for it for an offering in any amount. 32 pages, we'll send it to you uh, every month before we start that month, Lord willing, and we don't have difficulties with the mail. But it's important for you to understand there are four points. We're going to cover three of them today. Now let's begin with our overview. Here it is. I call this one strong culture. What is the culture of the favor of God and, and what do we learn by it? Now our reading assignment is 1 Chronicles chapter 13 through 16. This is the kingdom of David the good king who had a heart after God. We're going to focus on 1 Chronicles chapter 14, 1 through 12. Now we're going to cover three of the points that are mentioned in the power guide. And as we focus on this, we're going to learn some things that are very important. We're going to learn some things, the mistakes that David made. We're going to learn how the favor of God, if we're not careful and under the discipline of the word of God, can be somewhat uh, uh, troublesome for us. Now let me just say before we start with the scripture that the favor of God comes to those who fear God and love his word. John chapter 8 verse 31 says, if you love me, you will abide in my word. Very important. The favor of God comes to those who love his word, honor his word, and fear God. Let's look at the scripture. And so we go to this first chronicle scripture and here is what the Bible says. It says, now Hiram, he was the king of Tyre, sent messengers to David. He sent cedar trees with masons and carpenters to build him a house. And so David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, for his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of the people. Here's the point. Let's go straight into it. When the favor of God is upon us, the world around us will know it and desire to be with us. Now this is interesting. David establishes his kingdom after Saul has wrecked the kingdom. David brings healing to the kingdom. The favor of God is upon him. And it's interesting to me because Hiram to the north, we're going to find out the Philistines come against David in just a minute. But Hiram to the north says, you know what? This king's favored, man. I want to be his friend. And so when you're favored of God, the world around you, you'll have some friends. You'll have some people who who want what you have. That's part of the gospel message and part of the culture of the gospel. But sometimes we can get ourselves in trouble by thinking that the favor of God gives us permission to do whatever we want. Here's the scripture. The scripture continues. Now David then took more wives in Jerusalem. Um, Excuse me, but Deuteronomy 17 says the kings of Israel shall not multiply wives. So David made a mistake. He took more wives and David begot more sons and daughters. And in fact, these are the names of the children that had, he had in Jerusalem. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, uh, Ibhar, Elishua, Elapelet, uh, Nogla, Nepheg, and Jepheah, Elishimia, and Belediah, and Elapelet. And these are his sons as we continue in the scripture. Uh, and so the next passage moves into this. Uh, just because the favor of God is upon us does not give us permission 
to amend the laws of Christ to suit our desires. David was enjoying himself and he had great favor. The problem is the Bible says kings of Israel must not multiply wives. Actually, must not multiply silver and gold or horses either. David was disobeying the scripture. And so just because we have the favor of God, that doesn't mean that we can just do whatever we want. We still must become disciplined and self-controlled, which is a fruit of the Spirit, under the Word of God. So, beloved, just because we have grace in Jesus doesn't mean that the unmerited favor in Jesus just means, oh, we can just do whatever we want. We can, you know, just make, build biz, big businesses and love money. No, it means that to whom much is given, much is required. That's the scripture. Let's move on. And so then in verse 8, it says, now when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all of Israel... And the Philistines, they went up to search for David, and David heard of it. And he went out against them, verse 9, and then the Philistines went and made a raid at the valley of Rephaim. And David, this is what I love about David, verse 10, I love this. David inquired of God, saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. Here's the point. As we focus on this, God is graceful and full of mercy, even though David was multiplying wives. Even when our thinking is wrong, our theology is bent, God looks at the heart. Now, beloved, listen to me carefully. That does not give us excuse to purposely be ignorant of what God desires. The Bible will tell us how to modify our lifestyles. The Bible will tell us how to think. Listen carefully. We do not naturally think like God. No, we don't. That is why Paul says we must have the mind of Christ. We naturally think like man, which means we think God's here to be our bellhop to happiness. We want God to make us happy. But God calls us to be his witnesses. He calls us to serve him, not him to serve us. Now, God loves his children. He's going to bless his children. He's going to help his children. But beloved, the emphasis on our part should be Lord. You're asking who will go? Send me. Lord, how can I modify my lifestyle to what you want? And so, beloved, it's just like my father used to say, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. If you love Jesus, your behavior will show Jesus. You will modify yourself to his word. Of the coolest finds that help our understanding of the Old Testament of the Bible, well, they're actually not even mentioned within the Bible. And one of the sites that is not mentioned but really adds to our understanding is one we're going to look at right now. In 2007, excavations began at Kerbet Kayafa by archaeologist Yosef Garfinkel, who claims he wasn't setting out to find King David but that's exactly what he believes has been revealed. The ancient city dates to the 10th century BC during David's reign, much to the chagrin of scholars who dismiss David as more of a tribal leader. Excavations have revealed one of the most impressive fortified cities of biblical times. The walls are estimated to have stood six meters high and still stand two to three. Its walls were casemate, meaning double walls and made of huge boulders. Only covering about six acres and holding a population of perhaps 600 people, this city was a type of guard against David's western enemies, the Philistines. A most telling discovery is that this city had two gates, which so far is completely unique. This has lent intriguing support to the theory that this is Shearaim, a city associated twice with David in the Bible, and its name means two gates. The location and dating of Kerbet Kayafa fits neatly within the biblical record. It seems as if David's kingdom is more like the Bible's description than skeptical scholars would like to admit. Yet still, the intrigue isn't over. 
In 2008, an ink inscription on a pottery sherd was discovered at the site. It is the oldest example of Hebrew writing to date, and it records an ethical point of view advocating protection for orphans, widows, and foreigners, and enabling the king to accomplish such things. It does not quote scripture, but it parallels so closely passages in the Law and Prophets. This shows that David's kingdom was not only established, but supported scriptural thought with a literacy level that proves books of the Bible could have been written in this early period. This ministry is supported exclusively by our Discovery Partners. Discovery Partners are viewers who have joined us by giving a monthly offering in any amount. We have no other source of income except the regular giving of Discovery Partners. When you do give, we will automatically send you our Bible Power Guides every month. 32 pages of Bible commentary that match the daily programs. These guides also contain the unique reading plan of Quick Study. Join us today and become a part of the Bible Discovery Team. Now is the time to bring God's Word to our troubled world. Send to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2, or call 519-940-8338 in Canada, or 724-733-8336 in the USA. You can also support at www.biblediscoverytv.com. Thank you for staying with us here on Quick Study as we go through the Bible in one year chronologically. That mm -hmm. means we go through as it happened, That's right. which means on the next Quick Study television program, I want you to join us. I invite you, my personal invitation to you to join us. We're reading Psalm 1 and 2, Psalm 15, Psalm 22 to 24, Psalm 48, and Psalm 16. Now, now don't <laughs> worry, they're, they're shorter psalms, okay? Just more of them. And these psalms were written and occurred during the time we're studying now. We're going to learn Bible secrets to strong success in your life. And by the way, it has nothing to do with money. That and more on the next Quick Study television radio program. Stay there for that. Do you know with Jen? Mm -hmm. Do you know who watched David through a window despising him as he danced and played music in returning the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem? Okay, so everybody was very inspired mm -hmm. and everybody was rejoicing and excited except for this person. Yes. Who literally despised him mm -hmm. in her eyes. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. Corey, who is it? The answer is Michael, Saul's daughter. That's exactly right. Uh, Michael was his wife and the daughter of Saul. First Chronicles 15, verse 29, here's what it says. And it happened as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David whirling and playing music, and she despised him in her heart. And now she, she of course, Saul chased after David for many, many mm -hmm. uh, years. And Michael was given to David by Saul himself as a wife. That's right. But they split up and she was actually given to someone else. A big, long story. Yes. So this is a very, very sad story, really actually. Is. And uh, very, very interesting. We learn these things as we study the Bible. Now, listen, a couple of things I want to mention briefly. First of all, we watch you on Twitter. That is uh, when you follow us. So if you would like to follow us on Twitter, we'll give you the latest updates of what's going on, the latest things happening in the school, Bible Discovery TV. Here's our uh, particular slide, and that is this. It is, of course, uh, Rod, capital R-O-L, or R O D underscore TV, uh, and that is how you reach us on Twitter. And what we'll do is we'll keep you posted on all of those things. Very, very interesting. Also, I want to remind you that the Quick Study Power Guide is a print companion to this program. And so we want to encourage you to get yours. Now, that is how this ministry stays alive and survives, by the regular giving of people just like you. So here is the address. P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, 
L9W 5G2. For a gift in any amount, you can get the 12,000 word or more 32 page power guide sent to you every single month. Also, you can call at 724 733 8336 or 519 940 8338 in Canada. Listen, also remember that when you give on the website, BibleDiscoveryTV.com, you can instantly get the guide to download for your mobile device and also for your computer. Thank you in advance. We need your help. Here is Call to Prayer. Because mankind was created in the image of God, he seeks fellowship with others. Because of original sin, the fellowship with God has been broken. Only the word of Jesus Christ can mend it. However, seeking fellowship with peers is still very much a part of us. But because of that, the culture around us is always a strong influence upon us. David, the king, was being culturally correct when he took many wives, but he was being biblically wrong. Still, the Bible records that David was a great king because he had a heart after God. So with this, we pray, Lord, teach me not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed through your work in me. In our Strength in Your Mind segment today, the question is, where does the Bible teach us to be careful what we say and utter while we are worshiping in His presence? Good question. And if you think you know the answer, simply go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on Strength in Your Mind for the answers there. Or you can get on our mailing list. We send the answers out every single month on the Discovery Letter. And this is a way you can strengthen your mind and talk with each other with these questions. Another way to strengthen your mind is to make yourself right with God. See, we're born not right with God. But Jesus Christ came and He died on the cross because we've inherited sin. That's why there's sickness, disease, death, and starvation. Not because God made it this way, but that's the result of sin. But Jesus did something about it. The Bible says He came and He died on the cross to take the punishment for sin. And He rose again to give us the gift of eternal life. And you, you believe that and you confess with your mouth and say, Jesus, I need you. You're my Lord. Then you shall be saved. On behalf of all of us here, crew and family at Quick Study, come to Jesus today. Your personal power guide is waiting for you in our offices. Write today with an offering in any amount, and we'd be happy to send it to you. Or you can call at 519-940-8338 or 724-733-8336.